If anyone has ever told you that doing field research is like a luxurious, relaxing experience, they lied. So by the skin of our teeth, we collected just enough corals to conduct this experiment looking at how humans affect coral reefs. Next item on the agenda, we've got to create the experimental units where these little corals are going to live for the next six months. So we need something really tough, something really hardy that we can leave out on the reef for a long period of time. This is where cinder blocks come in. Cinder blocks are these heavy little pieces of concrete that we can strap our corals to, and we can also bolt in these square terracotta tiles and we use these to see all the little critters that will settle on our experiment over the course of the six months. As awesome as cinder blocks are for field experiments, I don't know if you've ever worked with them personally, but these little monsters tear flesh like it's going out of style. We call them cinder block kisses. Of course we needed to impose our three effects of human activities, nutrient pollution, sedimentation, and overfishing. So for nutrient pollution all we do is we add fertilizer in little tubes that we stick inside the cinder blocks. For sedimentation, we actually physically dump sediment on the unit over time at a rate that mimics what we see in nature. For overfishing, we build these large cages that exclude the bigger bodied fish that you would expect to be overfished in a reef system. So we feverishly put these units together all day after we collect the corals. We're building cages, we're drilling into cinder blocks, we're getting everything together and we work into the night, we get it all done. Between the flesh devouring properties of the cinder blocks and the excessive pokiness of the caging material, blood was definitely shed. Last item on the agenda, take all this stuff, put it all in the reef. We're talking nearly a ton of concrete, plus all the cages, plus all the corals, just five people, one day, can it be done? Good thing we got the dream team. So in deploying this experiment, we have to break up into different tasks. I am tasked with driving the boat, which was kind of like playing connect the dots, except the dots are people and big corals, and if you connect the boat with either of them, it's game over. So I would drive us from site to site, while my other four colleagues would hand each other the units from the boat, put them in the water, set them up, and then we would drive to the next site. So we do this for hours and hours. We had 72 of these units. It's grueling, it's exhausting, the weather's not cooperating as usual. We got wind, we got waves, the stress level is quite high, and the sun is going down. Just when we get the last experimental unit off the boat and into the water, the sun is long since gone. We have just enough light to see the channel markers on our triumphant drive back to the research station. They said it couldn't be done. They laughed at us. Now it's celebration time. We're super excited. We got this experiment out. Now all we gotta do is maintain the experiment for six months and hope that nature doesn't destroy everything.